He is known simply as the voice. People stop him in airports just to hear him say, you are an Iron Man. We are talking about Mike Riley. He is the man who calls the races. He is here with us on Off Duty to share some of his tips just as New York City gears up for its first Iron Man competition ever. Hey, Mike. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. Now, you're going to be there in New York City. We'll get to that in just a minute. But before we get started, you got to say the words just once for us. Let's hear it. Uh, you know what? That's kind of a sacred thing. I don't. I'd say that just to say it because it's for the athletes. It's reserved for those <laughs> athletes finishing. Well, how, how, about a, how about a tease? Say, Wendy, you could be an Iron Man. How's that? Wendy, you will be an Iron Man. Nice, How's that? Nice. Positive thinking. <laughs> now, for people who don't know what the voice actually does, on uh, the day of the big race, the big event. Tell, tell us the scope of what you do, Mike. Well, I start the race and I try to keep everybody calm because obviously after all the months of training, they're about ready to get in the water and embark on a 140 mile day. So, you know, the way I talk to them in the morning is very calming. I try to keep them relaxed and start the race on time so their day can continue in that kind of calm manner as calm as it can be. And then throughout the day, if I see him at what we call a hot corner or halfway on the bike or halfway on the run, you know, I'm talking to him again, you know, keep going, keep moving. We will be there waiting for you at the finish line. And then obviously, Wendy, the finish line is where it all happens after the, the professionals come in around 3, 3.30, all the way to that midnight hour of bringing everybody home and calling them an Ironman. And how many times have you called an Ironman race, Mike? Uh, New York will be my 114th on the microphone at an Ironman. And have you ever run one? No, in 1989 in Hawaii is when I was going to do that race, and that's when they asked me to come and announce it. So my wife and I talked about it, and I said, well, what the heck, I can always do it. I've never had the opportunity to announce it because I announce races in Southern California. Well. 24 years later, I'm still on the microphone in Hawaii, so. <laughs> there you go. Let's talk about this. When you see people in the race for the first time, you've seen it all. What are the three biggest mistakes, Mike, that you see people making? Oh, on race day, it's, it's usually, one, they're, they're too nervous. But the biggest thing is nutrition. The fourth discipline of Ironman, it's swim, bike, run, and then nutrition. If you don't get the right nutrition in during the day, so that's one of the biggest things. The other thing is, is they just don't have fun out there. The ones that are so nervous and they don't have fun and let the day come to them, the day then engulfs them. It, it beats them up. What about under training? I mean, I know some people with just a marathon will go out and say, look, I'll just push myself to the limit. I will make it through. The, but when you're doing the swimming, the biking, and then the full marathon, you can't really fake it, can you? There's no faking an Ironman. It comes back and bites you in the, in the you know what. They, they've got to put the mileage in and the time in because the Ironman day is so long. It's not always about the miles. They could be on their bike seven hours, eight hours, yet they may not have done a training ride except for four hours. Or they, they know they're going to be running four, five, six hours, and they'd never run a marathon, you know, or run that distance and run right. over four hours. So they've got to put the time in. They can't fool themselves because the race is going to come back and bite them. Is there a point in the race, Mike, when, you know, people need to say, you know what, I'm not feeling good. i got to back off and save it for later, or do you think they just need to go all out all the time? What's your advice? Yeah, they call them bad patches. It's going to happen. Even the professionals aren't going to go 100% the whole race. During a certain portion, especially on the run, their body's going to start breaking down. They need more liquid. They've got to slow down, get the nutrition in, and take off again. And if the athlete goes into the race knowing they're going to come to those bad patches where the grass is way tall and they can't get through it, just wait and work yourself through it, and you'll come out to the other side. And it's really more of a mental mindset than physical at that point. Let's talk about New York very quickly before we let you go. This is the New York, New Jersey area. It's never been done here before. What do you think about the logistics of pulling this off? The logistics are going to be very difficult, but the crew on the ground at Ironman races have been doing it so many years, and they've been preparing for this race for a solid year. I, I think they've got it all put together. Mike Riley, he says, Wendy, you will be an Ironman. I don't know. Maybe he's right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for being with us on Off Duty. You're welcome. See you in New York. All right.